Hello everybody and welcome to a new video. Today I am going to be pinning an insect and then identifying it using a dichotomous key. So here we have um, a, a tube with a couple of insects inside. I'm going to pour it out into this little lid I have here. And then uh, we're going to use this piece of styrofoam in order to pin it. I'm going to begin by uh, unscrewing the lid here and pouring out the contents. These insects here have been uh, soaking in uh, ethanol. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour them out. And uh, now all I have to do is pull out the one that I'm going to pin. It's this lovely little bug right here. And uh, it is actually a true bug. It's one of the few insects, or not really the few, but it's one of the insects that can be called a bug because it truly is a bug scientifically. So here I'm gonna give you a close up look at the bug that we will be pinning. Um, if any of you know insects, you probably already know what this is and would not need to conduct an identification. But because, um, just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how to do an identification on insects with a dichotomous key. So here we have um, the pins I'm going to be using. These are black enamel pins, uh, size three. We're going to be using this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and stab it into the, uh, the styrofoam. This is honestly one of the easiest ways to um, go ahead and uh, pin insects using styrofoam. So you're going to watch me here as I attempt to flip it over so that I can um, go ahead and pin it. There. And now I'm going to try to get into a good position in which I can um, mount it properly and uh, ensure the legs are all in a somewhat okay position. So, because these have been soaking in ethanol, they're still soft and pliable, they don't break. You can uh, manipulate them around as you would like. Now, excuse me while I uh, get this back into frame. There we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, find the right spot to pin. Here you want to do it to the right of this little upside down triangle shape. Start for obscuring the camera here, so I'm going to hold the bug with my uh, finger and try to drive the pin through as straight as possible. All right, then the pen should have gone through and it's being pushed in all the way now. And uh, I got it down to a depth that I thought was good enough where I could still handle it. There you go. I did uh, leave the leg out like that, but uh, that should be fixed later. See, that way when I grip it, there's still enough room to manipulate it and we have room there on the bottom. And here I am, I'm gonna go ahead and try to push that leg down into the insect like that. And that's how you would want it if you're gonna use it for identification purposes. I know people that who use, uh, who do collections, they like to have the legs spread out all the way because it looks nice, but that makes them more prone to breaking off when the insect does finally dry out. Here I'm going to try to get this in focus. I'm going to bring up the styrofoam here. And there you go. That's the bug in focus right there. You can really see a lot of the features it has. That piercing beak right there. And uh, 
looks like you go get a view from underneath it's not the greatest pinning in the world it came off a little bit too much on the right and not as straight as it could be but you know it'll work You know, so we can just admire how interesting it is. Um, we'll say before I pulled it out, before I put it in the ethanol, it was a bright, vibrant, vibrant green. All right, so now we're going to put this one in the collection. This is one that I started, I want to say, last year. Or maybe even two years ago. Um, yes, I'm leaning toward just about like a bit over a year ago. Um, all these have labels on them. Uh, this one will get a label on it later on. After uh, I have collected some more and pinned up some more. So there. You can see my I Love Cats mug there on the right. And there it's being put. Uh, with its order where it belongs and uh, yeah here you guys go you can have a quick gander at some of the insects I have here in my collection so yes these are uh, organized by order and then alphabetically by family and uh, we'll be getting into some of that uh, coming up real soon Okay, and now for identification purposes, I've gone ahead and pulled this out of the box, put it inside this little case here with some um, foam on the bottom. This is the USB camera I will be using. And of course, I'll have it connected to my laptop here. And uh, we'll be using this. It's not the best camera, but it will allow us to get a much closer look at the insect in order to look at the details and uh, go ahead and identify it so first we're going to take a look here at the beak to identify the suborder and we can see here that the beak arises eventually toward the front of the head all right and that's all we're going to use here i know there are other things here but that's the first thing we're going to look at and know this belongs in the suborder heteroptera So from then we can move on and take a quick look here at the antenna and we can see the antenna are as long as the head or longer. It's very easily apparent they're much longer than the head and so from here we can go ahead and move on to number 7 which asks us if the tarsal claws arise well before the tip of the last tarsal segment and often near the base or if they arise at the tip or the last tarsal segment and you can see here that they arise at the tip okay and so from then we will be moving on to number 10 on this dichotomous key which asks us if the head is equal to or longer than the thorax well it's actually much smaller than the thorax as you can see uh, here it's about half the size of the thorax I would say and the insect is obviously terrestrial was found outside my house. So from there we move on to 11 to try to determine if the antenna are four segmented or five segmented. So we can uh, take a quick look here. We just have to get the camera in focus. This is a uh, took me a long time to get this footage and to actually look at the details. So real quick here we're going to be Look at the antenna. There's one at the tip, the second one is curved, and you got the third long one. And you can see the fourth little tip right there connecting to the front of the head. So this is a four segmented antenna, which means we move on to number 12. So now we're gonna be taking a look here. And number 12 asks us if the front wings are with numerous tiny closed cells giving a lace-like appearance. Um, so we 
can get this in focus, you can see that this is very much not uh, a lace-like appearance. And it's definitely more than 5 millimeters uh, in length. So we're going to go ahead and move on to 14, which asks us if the ocelli are present or absent. In there, you can see the ocelli right there. Lost the focus there for a second, but right there you can see clear as day, right behind the eyes, a little circle right there. And that right there is the ocelli. And with that, we can move on to 15 which asks us if the middle and hind tarsi are one or two segmented or if they're three segmented. Now this was the hardest footage to capture, um, pre-handing the camera and trying to get a good focus and just how close you have to get with this camera physically to get the zoom in made it very hard. But um, you'll see once I, the footage comes around I'm just trying to get in focus here. You can see the long tarsal segment, then there's a second one, and then at the very connection is a really tiny third segment. It's very hard to catch. So yes, you can see the first one attached, then the second one's a bit longer, and then you get the third one with the claws coming out of it right there. So three segmented tarsus. So that takes us to number 16. Now 16 asks us if the front wings have acunias, or at least membranes separated from the corium. Now, you know, the acunias is actually a folded bit on the bottom of the of the um, of the wings. So we take a quick look here. You don't have a folded bit at the end. It's one complete wing covering the other. So these wings do not have a cuneus at all. So that moves on to 17, in which we have to check if the beak has three or four segments. This was some of the harder footage to capture because you have to, I had to zoom in really close here to get a good look at the head of the bug here. So here we can take a look at the beak and you can sort of see the little first segment there. So here we can get a better angle and there you can see the first segment and then the second segment there. You can see a little line right there by the body which separates it and gives us that third segment. It's hard to see here, but if you can actually see and keep on going, you see that that third segment does not split off into another segment. And so here we have a three segmented beak. This now takes us to 18, in which we check to see if the front legs are usually thickened under our spine, where the beak fits into the mid ventral groove on the prosternum, or if it, that does not happen. So here we can get a quick look and you can kind of see that the beak here is getting tucked into underneath the body. It's not the best look, but here from a different angle, when it focuses, it's being blocked by the leg a little, but you can see the beak tucking into a groove into the body of the bug here. So that already points us, you know, to the fact that this is that top one on the dichotomous key, but we also still have to check the legs on this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Now, if we take a look at this freeze frame here, we can see that the front legs are actually thickened and they have spines on them. And this points to 18A, the top one on the dichotomous key, which uh, then tells us that we need to go to number 19. And now if we take a look at number 19, we see that it says that uh, the fourth antennal segment is stouter than the third and that the front femora are very thickened and the front tarsi are concealed in a groove of tibiae. Now 19b here tells us that the fourth antennal segment is not enlarged and the front femora are usually slightly enlarged and it also goes on to say that the front tarsi is usually not concealed in the groove of the tibiae. 
And so, as we discussed before here, we can see that the front femur is slightly enlarged. But more importantly here, we can go ahead and take a quick look here and see that that fourth antennal segment is not enlarged at all. So this points us to the fact that we are looking at a member of a family, Ritaviidae, which is also the assassin bug. Of course, we kind of knew that coming in because this is the stereotypical assassin bug right here. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys how a dichotomous key works and how you can key out an insect that you may not know. In the next video, I shall be pinning and keying out a beetle. So you guys might want to stick around for that one. So make sure to go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.